Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunless Skies. Sounds like there's a bloody war going on. Oh no, no there probably is between them. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Um, welcome back. In this episode we are going to try and find Paul Prosper. Because we have two of these things, prospects. They want seven consignments of bronze wood. And... Jumble of souls? Yes. Consign three consignments of souls. So we have the bronze wood. Oh, the bank. We need to get rid of some of this crap. Right, so we don't need the third seeds. We don't need the munitions, because they almost exploded, I remember. I don't have, like, millions of supplies and hardly any fuel. How did that happen? Hmm. How many souls? I do. I need three of these. Let's, let's put some supplies in here, shall we? And then buy some fuel. What bizarre. Oh no. My brain is falling apart. There we go. I'm still kind of sick. It's been like a week. Well, it's not been a week. It's been two days. Still not feeling great. Not gonna lie. But I could be worse. Let's deliver our port reports here. It's going to influence the battle. And wow, 400 sovereigns. A lot of sovereigns. Great favour to affect the balance of power. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's leave that for now. Now, if I remember correctly, the Port Prosper is west-southwest. I need a compass, because I always get this wrong. Hold on, I'm just opening my notes. Uh, it's one of these has a compass in it. I know it does. Or maybe it, maybe it doesn't. Sorry I put a compass in my notes. That's a bit sad, I know, but there it is. West. Southwest. Right, that was right. West, southwest. I was thinking completely the wrong direction, so I'm glad I looked. West, southwest. If I go to this screen, which could really do with the compass, by the way. West, <laughs> southwest. So that's west. West, southwest is going to be down here. Which is weird, because Port Prosper used to be up here. So, we are going to go find that out. Because right now, I've spent about three minutes doing absolutely nothing. I don't feel like I've got enough fuel. Paranoid. Go with five and five. I should probably have more supplies, actually, because I can use the bat. Hey. Oh, let's take all these supplies. There we go. Right, I think we're well stocked. Let's hope we can find it. I should have repaired my engine. Oh, my terror is high. Oh no. I need to find Magdalene's. I know that much. I'm kind of hoping we're going to bump into it. Somehow I doubt it, though. But I, if that gets to four, and then a hundred, I die. So, I kind of need to get a handle on it. A little bit. At least I think if it gets to four, I die. I think that's what people have been telling me. I've been paying attention, honest. I would send the bat out, like, now. But I don't think we're going to find anything. Does it say a long way southwest or close? It just says west southwest. It doesn't say long, like really far away. So, it could literally be just here. Let's send out the map. See what we can find. Another new report. Great. Thanks, Matt. Back to the good old days of not telling me where anything bloody is. I'm kind of going just west right now. I need to aim down a little bit. But then here we go. Here's the new roughage that's going to get in the way. Despite the proximity to New Winchester, marauders prowl these glades to demonstrate their defiance. Oh, great. That's just what I need. Space pirates. Even though this isn't space. I keep being told this isn't space. I do listen. 
Oh, hello, something over here. Hello, Marauder. Oh, that's bad timing. Oh, just take the damn brandy. Ooh. That was close. Can never be, even though it's probably going to be salon stewed gossip. Yeah, not the most useful thing in the world, but I'm sure I'll need hundreds of them at some point. Every now and again, you can trade them in for something useful. I hope this is. I don't think this is going to be a port. Actually, I think this is going to be a picky uppy item. I wonder. Oh, it's the rat. <laughs> the inscription on. On the memorial to the unknown rat is dedicated to those brave ratters faber who gave their lives in early exodus to heaven. I completely forgot about the rat statue. I remember finding it once and being very confused. <laughs> Look at that. I like the ratters faber. It's an interesting idea. They basically just... I was going to say humanoid rats, but no, they're rats, but they're very smart. They're just smart rats. They build things. Like you get Rattus Faber crafted weapons and things. They're tiny. Because they're rats. Eee! Uh, that's just west. But sod it. Let's go find out what it is. Might as well try and uncover as much as we can so I can at least have a rough idea of escape routes and things later on down the line. Ooh, the sound of the rainforest. I say rainforest, it just sounds like rain. Ooh. Hello. A spidered signal box, foggy with webs. Once it was part of the Isenbard line. I wanted to find out more about the Isenbard line ages ago and then just completely forgot. Is that totally, is that called Cuddles Come? It's called Cuddles, Cuddles Cone. That is the coolest name ever. Okay, an abandoned signal box. The aban the signal box is shrouded in grey. Close up, you see that the box is covered in delicate webs, studded with cocoons. From the blue and white patterns of one bundle, it appears a spider has trapped a teapot. Inside, beneath a desk covered with rust rusted levers, is a luggage trunk. Captains in dire need can borrow from the cash inside, but custom dictates they must later replenish it. I don't really need the cash, so let's just read the ledger. The handwriting is poor, but legible. Captain O'Connor withdrew from the cash, citing desperate times. There is a column for miscellaneous notes. The captain describes the dapple of distant starlight falling over their engine. A long hours spent in the watchful dark, suddenly shattered by a dazzle of cold radiance. When will they know such a splendour again? Uh, this place was a folly, already nature strikes to claim it, it's not a place to linger. Yeah, I'm not gonna rob from the box. I'm not that guy. Okay, well, let's carry on going down this way. I still, I still love this lighting effect. Like these spores or whatever they are. It's, just, it's amazing. I love it. It's going to be in every single one of my thumbnails. <laughs> it's like, oh, that looks pretty. Let's put it in the thumbnail. Maybe people will click it, click it. And they hear my dumb voice and like, oh god. It's even better when I've got a cold. Blocked up nose. Sore throat. Oh, I think you just love it. Using your voice. To try and make things. Oh, almost read that again then. Yes, we, we know, Rat. We salute you. Right, let's... Let's go in here. I'm going to send out the bat again. Feels looking good. Oh, hello. Slam the brakes on, even though it's behind me curious as to what it is. Hmm. <laughs> Where are you? 
Please don't kill me. Hello? Something to crave? Ah, supplies. That's good. I'll take I'll take supplies. Okay, we'll cut cut around this way this time. It seems much easier to navigate this end of the map than it is the top and the north west of the map. I hear gunfire. What could possibly be fighting? The scout has nothing to report. Hmm. Where is it? I can't quite... I think I should be coming up to it now? Ish? Is in the fight. But I can't hear it. Get a direction off it is what I should say. I can hear it, but I can't quite quite work out where it's coming from. Well, we're doing a good job finding poor pass, but let's put it that way. That's something up here, let's go have a look. The looming bronzewood casts deep shadows, perfect hiding places for outcasts, killers, and the desperate. Hello, Marauder. Uh oh. The hour of the wolf. It is late, and you are alone. Doubts prey on you. Is this the path you should have taken? You trespass upon the precincts of heaven. What price will be exalted of you? What price have you already paid? Ah, I don't want to drink. Ah, because I'm already like an alcoholic. <laughs> Not when you have a taste for the bottle, exactly. I don't want more. Let's pass. Two terrors, not bad. Questions worry you? Chasing away sleep. Later, there is a knock at your door. One of your officers is outside. Doctor, we need you. Duty calls. The doubts must wait. Whoa. Oh, she got some. Wonderful. Oh no, another one. Quick, run away. I don't want to find them all. My terror is looking high. My fuel isn't exactly looking brilliant, but I think we have enough. All I want to do is get to Port Prosper. How hard can it be? That's a thing to crave. Nice if these were fuel. Send out the bat. I'm kind of way off course. I'm kind of lo I'm looking in the completely wrong place. Oh, that's lucky. It's in front of me. Is it a wreck? I don't know about these bits of. What the hell is that? It looks amazing. A once proud engine drifts here. Riven by a destructive growth of fungus. I haven't... I've never seen this. I mean, last time I did one of these, it was the prison... No, the corpse transport? I can't remember what it was called. It had a really cool name, and it was one of my favourite parts. Oh, let's see what this is. Approaching the Parsifal. The engine drifts unhappily through the sky. Some unholiness keeps the front of the engine tethered to the rest, despite the eruptions of corpse-white fungus that divide the train. The locomotive's side is scored with black scars. The name Parsifal can be made out on the brass letters on its side. The first engine through the avid horizon, a navig navigator whispers. London's pride once. Captain by Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe. That is the most... British name ever. Oh, it says she. It was Percy. Yeah, okay. She was to chart new horizons beyond Albion. Never came back. Well, let's board it and find out. What happened to the first engine in the high wilderness? 
Its doors are sealed, its lights dim. It drifts in the currents, mangled by fungal extrusions. Bolt cutters and pry bars are required to break the outer door. Its locking mechanism is antiquated and slickened by, with an oily substance. You wrench the door open and are immediately greeted with a cloud of yellowing spores. Your vision blurs just as your navigate, navigator torches them, igniting the air with burning fungus. A few gas lights flicker on the walls. The scratchy sounds of a gramophone can be heard. How do I get a feeling? Being fungused is not a good thing. Visions of Parsifal. Oh dear. You've entered the wreck of the Parsifal. Some talk of Alexander, and some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander, and such great names as these. But of all the world's great heroes, there's none that can compare with a toe row 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 to the British Grenadiers. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Spores drift through the broken carriages like dying fireflies. Recruitment posters bearing her, her renewed majesty's face molder on the walls. Scratchy but distinct echoes through the empty carriages. A great wall of pulsating fungus separates the back of the engine from the front. Well, let's... Let's go to the captain's cabin. It, in the first designs for London's engines, the captain always roomed towards the back of the train for their protection. Ah, crap. Plush seats surround a decaying paper map placed on a mahogany table. Drinks, some floating with mildew, have been poured in glasses around the table. Maps hang from sprouting fronds like peeling wallpaper. Spores flow gently through the room. Logbooks lie scattered about the table. None date from after 1897. The engine's destination was to be Traitor's Wood. The last entry regards a stop at Hybris, which they named Hybrazil. Something was brought on board. The captain's bunk has collapsed in a pile of rotten wood and infected bedsheets, wet with fungal growths. Oh no, they went to Hybris and got infected? I still haven't solved the hybris mystery yet. Now let's investigate the armory. I can't imagine they've got anything we don't we need, but yeah. Ooh, one terror. Lit. The solid iron walls of the armory are stained and rotted with sporing bodies. Lockers hang open, revealing decaying and antiquated sky suits. The old design, with thermal chest plate and brass buttons for fastenings. Several of your crew coo appreciatively. But back away when a prodding of one suit reveals a fruiting colony of golden black mushrooms has sprouted within. Amongst the outdated and unused weaponry, you uncover a trove of novels. Fanciful stuff, but all concerned with the possibilities of space travel and the interactions between modern man and the alien. Who dist, dist brood upon the chaos dark and rude? and bid its angry tumult cease, and give for wild confusion peace. O oh, hear us when we cry to thee, for those in peril on the sea. This is getting weird. Reach the fungus. Shivering spasms of festering fungus separate the front of the train from the rest. The only way is forward is through. You organize your hardiest stokers into a rotor, slowly but steadily widening the gap between the pallid walls of quivering fungal flesh. The smell is dire, as are the ominous bulges protruding from the mushroom bulk. Thanks to your capable direction, however, a wide path is cleared straight through the fungus by setting it in it like two lungs separated by a transier. You pass through unharmed. Uh, when Britain first, at heaven's command, arose from the Azure main, this was the charter of the land. The guardian angels sang this strain. I think I might be losing my mind. The front of the engine is even more infected with sprouting mushrooms and sporing fungal growths. The engine room lies ahead, 
seemingly the source of the persistent movement. Before that, however, is a haze of spores, rendering the corridor ahead entirely noxious. Um, well, we could explore the crew crab cabins. In locomotives as odd as this, the crew were always assigned bunks near the engine room. The sounds of the gramophone are louder here. Battered metal and tormented wood panelling compromise comprise the confines in which the crew dwelled. Chubby toadstools round pastries? Round his pastries dot the cramped bunk beds. Mementos of home are scattered about the fruiting debris. Slim volumes of Arnold and Blake, vials of honey and engravings of simple domestic scenes can be found under every bulk bunk. You also uncover a little tally chart on a folded up bit of paper. It seems the crew were organising a whip around for their commander's retirement present. They'd settled on a plot of land in, on Port Prosper. On thee our hopes we fix, God save us all. Oh, we transfer the spore and carry, I suppose. Fruiting sacks and clouds of vitrolic orange into the air. Passing through will be hazardous to the health. The engine room is beyond. You go alone. Your crew disappear behind you, lost in a haze of orange and gold. Above, sacks of sporing fungus encrusted to the metalwork begin to erupt. Showers of spore and vicious liquids render the terrain still more hazardous. You feel a peculiar sensation. Your hands tingle, as though wishing to reach out to touch the fungus. As though for one more drink, you increase your speed. At last, you leap over a final hissing sack of fungal eggs and find yourself before the engine room door. When Britain first, at heaven's command, arose from the SMA, we've read that one, uh, you're outside the engine room. The engine room is before you. Light and music spill from under the door. Queasy and persistent. Enter the engine room. The thick steel door is scored with bullet holes and is held in place by tendrils of ropey white fungus. As you approach, you notice the damage done to the walls riddled with bullets. Old stains on the carpet, an attack was mounted on the engine room. You can hear music loud and clear from inside. An eerie green light pours through the hinges, like flood water. You push open the door. You've entered the engine room of the Parsifal. May God have mercy on your soul. Mm. The remnant of Percy Blythe. The engine room is cold as a sunless sky. Your breath hangs in long chains before you. The boiler is off. The infernal gramophone sits atop the boiler. The music is no better for being closer to it. Before you lies a dense macabre of fungus and corpses. And in front, on the wall suspended by fungus, is a body in a captain's uniform. Let's investigate the engine room. What happened here? The corpses, they're bullet wounds. They are unmarred by fungus, decaying in peace. Among the rank insignia, you spot a first officer, a chief engineer and a conductor. All died violent deaths. There are far too few to, to amount to the full crew. The boiler, a battered, antiquated, wheezing contraption, stands silent and broken. Strips of iron hang in front of it, as though it had suffered an explosion inside. You find fungus amidst the ashes. Clumps and clusters of tendrils sprout from the charcoal. When burnt, the spores would have infected the whole engine. Oh dear. And when the siege is over, we to the town repair. The townsmen cry, Hurrah, boys, here comes a grenadier. It's all getting very British. Examine the corpse. The corpse of the finest officer of his... His? I'm getting really confused. They've said her and his, more like... Mm, where's the continuity? <laughs> Unless I misread it. 
The corpse of the finest officer of his generation hangs from the wall, suspended by chains of pale fronds. His skin is sallow, and there are strands of golden fungus across his cheek, as though a sun sits beneath the skin. His eyes open. Percy Blythe looks down on you. Blue fruiting heads speckle his beards like hanging seaweed. Next to him, the gramophone crackles out its dreary anthems of years past. His mouth opens too wide as he speaks. His jaw cracks. Ah, he's alive! Why is he alive? Somehow, he is alive. He groans. His mouth opens impossibly wide, and a cloud of yellow spores emerge. I am all that is left. An oily liquid begins to trip from his left eye. I am a child of Grave Garden. The voice alters, becoming more clipped, more static, like that of the voices on the gramophone. I am Le Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe. I am a captain of the Parsifal. My task? My task was to explore the wilderness and return home with new discoveries. He groans, as though weeping. I am all that remains. I want to go home. Oh, wow. Ask him what happened here. Please don't give me one terror every time. Ah, oh, damn it. We met the children of Hybris. We sought to know each other. Wanted to go to the wood. Wanted to see what was kept from us. Percy is drooling as he speaks. The gramophone clicks as yet another patriotic dirge begins to play. Percy Blythe struggles in his bonds, pulling himself up to stand a little straighter. We made contact in Hybris. The fungus was so bright, so beautiful. His eyes shine gold. I brought it aboard, God forgive me. I wanted the crew to see, to know. Oil leaks from ho those hollow eyes. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. They came willing. Others refused to join us. We had to breaks off into silence, staring away into the middle distance. I'm guessing they killed each other then. Great. What happened to him? Percy Blythe launches into a long, me meandering, slurred story of children and gardens, of a cruel king who needed, but did not love his subjects, despite their love for him, of knowledge denied and growth checked, of tyranny and freedom, of grief and betrayal and longing. The music bursts into sudden life. Percy jerks and fixes you with an infected eye. I was stupid. I thought we would be welcome here. And we were. We were welcomed. We were loved. The children of Verdance, they wanted us. He begins to sob. It is a sad, squelching sound. Yeah, keep my distance. We're not going near those noxious secretions. The oily burbling goes on for some time. The lieutenant commander becomes rapidly incoherent. Sometimes he weeps for mother, other times for London. He believes himself disgraced twice over. Eventually, the embarrassing affair comes to a stop, and Percy Blythe is left blowing clouds of spores from his mouth, his eyes vacant. Yeah, he is totally dead. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, what, do you, what does he want? Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe lets out a low moan and slumps forward. The chains of fungus adjust to accommodate this despair. Home, he slurs like a man drunk demanding another drink. On Hybris, Mother spored us there. She set out her children across the stars to learn. The traitors would. We were forbidden from entering there. But now its king is dead. But this craft failed before we could arrive. The body jerks. As though shocked. Percy faces face rises to face you. London, he rasps. London. I think we should just blow this to hell. This seems like a terrible idea. Can it can it even fly? Yeah. No harm in asking, except for the one terror. No, the lieutenant commander hisses, his eyes rolling in his head. Sabotage, mutiny, ignorance. No fuel. The children too greedy, spread too fast, like fire. The engine is broken, the crew all gone. I am alone. His head lolls as though his neck were broken. 
Okay, let's decide his fate. Lieutenant Commander Percy Bly, decorated hero of London's forces, first captain through the avid horizon, gazes at you, slack-jawed and unseeing. Please, he rasps, take me home, or finish this, he twitches. We just wanted to know what was kept from us in Traitor's Wood. Why did our king not love his children? <sighs> mm, Blythe hangs listless in front of you, apparently exhausted. His head lulls and his gaze is dull. What is to be done? Oh no. Well, we're not going to take him to London. We're definitely not going to take him to Traitor's Wood because I've just fixed that place. Well, largely fixed it. Um, we could take him to Hybris, but I don't know where it is. Do I want him on my ship? Or do we just burn it all down because it destroyed his engine? We're going to burn it all down. Hmm. Someone let me know what happens if you do the other things, please. If anyone has. But I think for now, the safest bet is to just end it. Too dangerous. The remnant of Percy Blythe does not appear to register your response. His head bobs with a tilting of the engine. You back away from the door and quickly away through the rotting carriages of the Parsifal. Your crew do not need telling twice. With torches and pistols, you roam the fruiting carriages, igniting plump walls of fungus wherever you can find them. You work from back to front until the locomotive blazes like fireworks at a prom. At the proms. Soon, the engine will be little more than a smoldering husk, and somewhere in the conflagration burns Percy Blythe, but not for long. You flee the smoking wreck of the Parsifal, having purged it of this infection. Well, that's the end of that man. Seems a bit of a shame, really, but... Gain some experience, and we've got another soul floor. And on that one, I have gone way over where I anticipated being right now. And I'm hoping I'd find Port Prosper. Hmm. I've kind of gone over time right now. But I'm really far away from any port, so it might be in my best interests to look around. Oh man, this is a dead end. God damn it, game. Also running out of fuel. Where is the closest? Wow, we are really far away from any port right now. Hmm, this isn't gonna be fun. You know what? I might just head back to New Winchester. Even though I get a Betty Port Prosper is literally just there. Oh god damn it. Don't make me do these decisions. Okay. I will speed this up for your benefit. Made it back. A little bit of running with the meat. Ah, <clears throat> reach marauder, but oh god. Take the brandy. I love the way that like our supplies, a whole supply box is just brandy. But uh, yeah, we 
run out of fuel. That's what I was going to say. But anyway, this, this episode has gone on way longer than I anticipated, and I didn't even achieve what I was planning on achieving. It seems to be a theme with my, uh, my videos. I just explore and find things and do that instead. So, I am going to end the episode here, as you may find the dock. Have I gone past it? God damn it. I thought this looked familiar. Ah, I crashed. Oh. I've got to do that at least one, once an episode, right? So, let me know what you think. Now, if anyone's done any of the other endings to the possible, please let me know. I'd like to know. I don't particularly want to Google it. It's better if I hear it from other people. If everyone did what I did, then away. Hey, good, good job. Burning it seems like the best idea. But, yeah, like, subscribe, let me know what you think, and your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.